Hi, my name is Hannah Jennerine and welcome to the very first episode of VSC's Perspective on Violence Prevention, a thought-provoking series brought to you by the Victim Service Center of Central Florida, the Certified Rape Crisis Center in Orange, Osceola, and Seminole County. In each episode, we delve into the complex tapestry of violence prevention, discussing hot topics and strategies while also offering insights into the challenges, achievements, and the unyielding commitment of Central Florida's community to foster a safer and more peaceful society. Today, we'll be focusing on two topics. The first is gender-based violence and its prevalence within the world, and the second is how you can survive during the holidays this year. So let's start with the former. On October 4th, 2023, the Victim Service Center hosted the very first Gender-Based Violence Awareness Forum in conjunction with the State Attorney's Office. I led the discussion with a presentation on how gender bias leads gender-based violence and ended with a panel discussion that included survivors, a victim advocate, and a representative from the State Attorney's Office. The audience was filled with community members to spread awareness, and it was very well received. And just to recap and explain, when we talk about gender-based violence, we are referring to harmful acts that are perpetuated towards an individual based on their gender. Gender-based violence is also an umbrella term, which means that it covers a broad category of different types of harmful acts that are perpetuated in society. This includes sexual violence, domestic violence, arranged marriages, femicide, infanticide, and human trafficking, among many others. Now, while heterosexual men are and can be targeted with gender-based violence, the numbers are statistically lower when compared to young girls and women. This includes women of color and women within the LGBTQ community. So when we are talking about gender-based violence, we are referring to violence that is committed towards these marginalized populations. Now, in me saying this, I don't want to give the impression that violence against men should be neglected because, like I mentioned, it happens more often than we think it does. And many face ba many barriers as to why they don't come forward and share their story. This has a lot to do with traditional gender roles and stigma. For the purposes of this segment, however, I do want to focus on the prevalence of violence as it relates to women. Statistics reveal that 15,000 to 50,000 women and children are forced into sexual slavery in the United States every year, and the total number varies wildly as it is very difficult to research. Additionally, over one in three women in the United States have experienced rape, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime and an estimated 91% of victims of rape and sexual assaults are female, with nearly 99% of perpetrators being male. So the question now becomes, why? Why are these crimes happening? Why are women being killed, abused, raped, and trafficked? What is the cause of gender-based violence? And the answer to that question lies in oppressive belief systems that originate from patriarchy, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, and rape culture. Within these ideologies, it is assumed that men hold power and authority because they are intelligent, rational, and fit to be in leadership positions, while women are subordinate, inherently emotional, vulnerable, and irrational, which makes them unfit to be in a position of power. It also includes the stigma that individuals from the LGBTQ community are mentally ill and unnatural. These oppressive belief systems essentially are what create inequality, powerlessness, and violence against women. For example, currently in society, women of color, specifically black women, are often stereotyped as angry, aggressive, or hypersexual. These stereotypes can lead to negative assumptions about black women's personalities, behavior, and abilities. Statistics have revealed that black women experience the highest rate of intimate partner violence, with 40.4% experiencing physical violence, sexual violence, or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime. 
When it comes to Native American women, these are individuals who are often hypersexualized and objectified in media and pop culture. And it was found that Native American women are also at a higher risk of experiencing gender-based violence than women of other races. With over 56% of Native American women having experienced sexual violence in their lifetime. Transgender individuals also experience higher rates of gender-based violence. It was found that 47% of transgender people have experienced sexual assault and transgender women of color are at the greatest risk of experiencing fatal violence. And finally, Latinx women are often stereotyped as overly emotional, hypersexualized, and submissive. And statistics have shown that 34.1% of Latinx women have experienced physical violence, sexual violence, or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime. What these statistics show is that gender-based violence is not uncommon, nor is it unusual. It is happening every day. And understanding the root causes and effects that these oppressive belief systems have is the first step to creating change. Moving forward, the holidays are near. For many individuals, this time of year can be triggering, bringing up past memories, negative emotions, or anniversaries that cause sadness. Seeing old friends and family can remind us of this loss, and feeling anxious during the holiday season is not unusual. So I wanna take a moment to share with you six strategies that can help you not only survive the holidays, but also find healing and hope during this holiday season. That's up next on VSC's Perspective on Violence Prevention. The holiday season is near, and if this time is triggering for you, I wanna share six strategies that can help you thrive this holiday season. Number one, prioritize self-care and set boundaries. This is a time to prioritize your well-being, and it is essential to set boundaries with friends and family. Communicate your needs and take time for self-care. If you do not want to attend a family function or an event, understand that you can say no. No is a full sentence. However, it can be difficult to say this, especially if you haven't done it before. So here are some phrases you can use to fully express yourself while honoring your boundaries. I appreciate your invitation, but I need some space this holiday season. I hope you understand. I'm focusing on self-care this year, so I won't be able to participate in all the usual holiday activities. I'd prefer not to discuss my past experiences during this holiday gathering. Let's talk about something else. I need to prioritize my well-being during the holidays, so I won't be taking on any extra responsibilities. I've decided to keep my holiday plans low-key to reduce stress. Please respect my choice. Also, when it comes to self-care, make sure you're doing things that bring you peace and joy, whether it's reading, meditation, or spending time in nature, and make it a priority. Number two, seek support. Survivors of violence often feel isolated. The holidays can exacerbate these feelings, but you don't have to go through it alone. Seek support from friends, family, or support groups. Connecting with people who understand your experience can provide a sense of belonging and help you feel less isolated. Number three, create a supportive network. Building a supportive network of people who can be there for you during the holidays is crucial. Identify individuals you trust and confide in them about your feelings. Let them know how they can best support you, whether it's simply being there to listen or helping you manage the holiday stress. Number four, develop healthy coping mechanisms. Find ways to express your feelings safely, such as journaling or art therapy. Know your triggers. Recognize the specific triggers that may emerge during the holidays. For example, certain sounds, smells, crowded spaces, anniversary dates, etc., and plan how to manage them. This goes back to establishing those healthy boundaries, learning to say no, excusing yourself from situations where you may feel pressured, and prioritizing your self-care. Seek professional help. If needed, consider therapy or counseling to help you work through trauma. The Victim Service Center is the Certified Rape Crisis Center in Orange, Osceola, and Seminole County, and we serve all survivors of violent crime ages 12 and older. We offer free advocacy, crisis counseling, therapy, and support groups that are confidential, 
and we don't ask for any documentation or insurance. In just a moment, I will share with you how you can contact and reach out to our office and 24-7 helpline. Number five, reclaim the season. Create new traditions, start fresh traditions that bring you happiness and make the holiday season uniquely yours. Focus on personal growth. Use this time to reflect on your journey and how far you've come. Practice self-compassion. Be kind to yourself, recognizing the strength it takes to navigate the season as a survivor. And finally, number six, give back. One way to find healing during the holidays is to give back to your community. You can do this through volunteering and helping others. This provides a sense of purpose and empowerment. It can also remind you that there is goodness in the world, even in the face of past trauma. The VSC is always looking for volunteers and a great resource that you can use is called volunteermatch.org to find local openings near you. As we conclude our first episode on VSC's perspective on violence prevention, I want to emphasize that healing is possible and hope can be found even in the darkest times. Remember that you are strong, resilient, and deserving of a peaceful and joyful holiday season. Thank you for joining us, and if you would like to learn more about the VSC and our free services, please visit victimservicecenter.org, call our office line at 407-254-9415, or call our crisis line at 407-500-HEAL. And to everyone listening, healing is not linear, and you are not alone.